In this lesson, I'll show you how to find a basis for the orthogonal complement. The question reads, let W be the subspace of R5 spanned by the vectors shown below. Find a basis for the orthogonal complement of W. To tackle this problem, what I will first do is put these vectors as rows in a matrix. Then, the space they span is the row space, that is the matrix W. The orthogonal complement of the row space is the null space. So all this question is really asking us is to find the null space basis. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll write down 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and negative 1. That's that first vector. And the next one is 2, negative 1, negative 3, 0, and negative 2. And the rest are as follows. Also, since we're finding the basis, we need to set each of these rows equal to 0. So let's go ahead and find the row reduced echelon form. I'm going to assume that you already know how to do this. You already know how to row reduce this down so that you have leading ones. And if you do it correctly, you should end up with the following matrix. I encourage you to use a calculator to do this because you don't want to waste your time finding the row reduced echelon form. This is what it should look like. Okay, at this stage, once you have created your new matrix, you have to look for columns within this matrix that don't have a leading one. I can see that this column does not have a leading one and neither does this one. So column three and five will serve as our parameters. I'm gonna call this T and I'll call this S. Whereas every other column, this one, that one, and that one have a leading one. The reason why it's important that you identify your parameters is because our basis depends on these two. Here's what I mean. First of all, I'll set x to the power of 3, this column, equal to t, and x to the power of 5 equal to s. Then I'll write out all of my rows as equations. So the first row is 1x sub 1. There is no x sub 2 term minus x sub 3 there's no x sub 4 term, but there is an x sub 5 term. And that's equal to 0. And I'll substitute t and s wherever I see x sub 3 and x sub 5. So I have x sub 1 minus t minus s is equal to 0. And I have to do the same thing for the other two rows. So let's uh, make some space over here. I'll write down x sub 2 plus x sub 3 that's equal to 0. Remember, I'm replacing x sub 3 with t. So x sub 2 plus t. And this equation is good. Unlike the previous one, we can actually solve for t. So I'll bring that over, and I end up with x sub 2 is equal to negative t. For this last row, we write down x sub 4 plus 2 times x sub 5 is equal to 0 x sub 5 we can replace with s. So we have x sub 4 plus 2 times s is equal to 0. Let's solve for s. We have x sub 4 is equal to minus 2s. Also what I will do is bring that and that over where I have x sub 1 is equal to t plus s. The reason why this is important is because now I can create my vector x which relates t and s. So I'll have t plus s, and I'll have these two column vectors. To fill in these column vectors, I look at each of the equations that I made along the way. For t, that very first spot will be x sub 1. And when we're relating t and x sub 1, t has a coefficient of 1. So replace that very first row with 1. In this equation, we're relating t with x sub 2, and it has a coefficient of negative 1. So write that negative 1. For over here, we have x sub 3 is equal to t. That coefficient is 1. Do we have an equation for x sub 4? Yes, we do. It's over here. And there's no relationship with t, so it's 0. For x sub 5, it's only related to s. So again, t will be 0 there. For this column vector, we do the same thing. S related to x sub 1 has a coefficient of 1. S related to x sub 2, there is no relationship, so it's 0. 
x sub 3, there's no relationship with s, so it's 0 again. x sub 4, there is a relationship, it's negative 2. And for x sub 5, it's 1. So these column vectors are the basis for w, and that's it. That's how to find the basis for the orthogonal complement.